Hey everybody, how you doing tonight? Happy Tuesday before Thanksgiving. It's, uh, I got a few different things I want to cover tonight. So, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of questions lined up, so I may just get to those as we go along. But, uh, again, Tuesday night, 8.15, so now's our time to roll for the week. Got a lot of stuff happening, and uh, I've got a lot of stuff, a lot, of, a lot more videos lined up, a lot more video ideas lined up for you guys to put onto the dog trainer uh, daily stuff. I think I'm going to change the name of that, because I used to do daily stuff, and now it's not daily, so I feel bad calling it daily. Maybe like a vlog or something like that, but uh, either way. So tonight I want to couple I want to cover a few things and I'll probably repeat this a couple times before we actually get going. But as you can see from the title, there's free dog training giveaway tonight. So what I'm going to be giving away at the end of the session tonight is a free one hour lesson uh, with me at the facility. You obviously have to get yourself there if you're from out of state or whatever, all that fun stuff. Um, and we can cover whatever you want to cover, I, you know, to a degree. We can only go so far within an hour, but I think, uh, you know, you'll at least make some progress. That's for sure. That's for sure. So the other thing I wanted to uh, touch on as well is um, Cyber Monday is coming up. Now, I don't sell stuff on our website. We're working on it. But, you know, I mean, as far as products are concerned, but we are going to basically give a, give a deal on board and train programs. We're going to knock $250 off of our board and train programs. So what you have to do is call us on Cyber Monday um, and inquire and book on Cyber Monday, probably for any training in January for any board and train program that you guys want. So. Again, that's Cyber Monday, so it's this coming Monday. You have to call the office on Monday and book on Monday to qualify for the uh, $250 discount off of the board and train. So kind of crazy, but hey, why not? I thought I'd jump into the mix with how all of that works, but um, and we'll see how it goes. Again, so you know, at the end of tonight, I'll be giving away the free one-hour uh, private lesson with me at the facility here in Hyde Park. And uh, that's with your dog, and we'll cover you know numerous things going on, whatever you really want to cover. We'll probably chat ahead of time so I can kind of plan, come up with a game plan for whatever you want to work on. So uh, that being said, you guys also you know feel free to. That's funny. I just saw the questions on my computer pop up, and I don't see them on my phone. Yikes. Uh, feel free to ask some questions tonight in the comments. I'm not going to get to them as they pop up. I'll probably go back as I'm going through the stuff here that I just want to cover, like housekeeping stuff, if you will. Uh, so don't be afraid. If you have questions, then uh, just pop them on there because I, I didn't really go into, hey, what's been on your mind lately like I normally do. So just feel free to throw them on there if you have any questions and I'll get back to them. But for now, obviously Thanksgiving is here. And... I get the question all the time about what are dogs allowed to eat, what are they not allowed to eat, and I think it's really important to keep in mind that sauces, gravies, all that kind of stuff, just not good for your dogs. There's just way too much sodium and salt in those things. Your dogs don't need that kind of stuff. If you're going to give them anything, throw some raw vegetables into their dog food dish as you're prepping or something along those lines. Uh, you know. If your dogs are on raw food already, then you know you can use the turkey neck and that kind of thing. If your dogs do not eat raw, uh, do not give those things to your dogs, especially as the first go around. Obviously, we don't feed any you know cooked bones or anything like that to your dog. Um, you know meat scraps. I'm just kind of partial on. I, you know, it's I, I would rather not do it. You know, you're, especially if you've been feeding the same food to your dog and you throw something in like that that's brand new, you can you can do a job to their system for a day or two. And uh, it's <laughs> not a good thing, that's for sure. So just keep that in mind and, you know, just play it safe. Just because it's a day that we celebrate doesn't mean it's a day that dogs celebrate. You know, it's like their birthday and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I don't know, I think sometimes we get too in tune with 
what's going on and that every being in our life needs to celebrate the same thing that we celebrate. And I think it just gets a little out of hand sometimes. But anyways, so be it. The other thing I want to talk to you guys about was the, the YouTube video I put up last week on sensitivity with a slip lead with this dog, Timber, that's here for a board and train. And it's getting a lot of views and a lot of, a lot of feedback too. I think people are surprised at how actual little work you can do with your dog with a leash and still start to see changes with your dog. And so if you guys haven't seen that, I would check it out. It's, whoops, as I just kicked the camera. I think I would, uh, you know, keep an eye on that and watch it. It's not that long, 15 minutes, but it might give you a completely different outlook on what's going on with your dog right now, for sure. And, you know, I think, you guys know me, I'm not a guy that teaches sit, stay, heal, down, come, roll over, get me a beer, go get, go get the newspaper, get me the toilet paper kind of guy. And to see what can be accomplished with a dog without any commands and just leash work and just how you move is pretty cool to see how the dog can actually learn that much quicker from you when you just strip everything away. Like I said, it's peeling the, the layers of the onion away until you finally get to the core and figure out what the hell's going on with a dog and then you can get his attention and then from there, you can build on that. And I think that's important to be able to do with your dog at one point, even if you just practice just once, just once, uh, and just experiment. It's, it's pretty cool experimenting with that type of thing. So, um, and then, so look, I, that was pretty much just my housekeeping things. We got the free giveaway tonight, the Cyber Monday thing. I'll go over the, all this stuff at the end before uh, we kind of close up shop. But that's kind of what I wanted to cover with you guys. So we're just gonna go a little old school here on some of your comments and questions. Uh, I just thought it'd be a little different tonight just to kind of randomly, um, you know, instead of asking what's on your mind, just seeing your questions. So Corey's dealing with his puppy. We've been chatting about this for some time. Uh, that started to bark at noises and things like dogs and people. Um, he's a six or seven month old puppy. Corey, sometimes dogs at this age can go through, um, what do they call it? A uh, fear stage, I think. I don't know if that's the technical term for it, uh, but there is a stage that dogs go through where everything can, can kind of be scary. And we don't want to force a dog into a situation that it's already scared of, but we do want to take our time. And, you know, it may, you know, something like setting it up to where maybe your dog sees somebody at a distance that's coming towards you, it's good to set that up to where maybe where it's somebody that the dog knows already and has a really good relationship with. Some, something that triggers his nose in the air as he sees that dog. Uh, you, you know, be, just because that, sometimes that six or seven month stage, they can be like really leery, unsure, different noises happen. Uh, I would also venture to say too, he's starting to mature a little bit. So he's, you know, maybe a little bit more in tune, a little bit more sensitive. Without seeing it, it's kind of hard to guess. I'm just giving you some ideas of what, it, what can, be caused by this or how it gets created so you know Corey I would just send me another video I you know you've sent me a bunch already which is great so don't be afraid to do it again the more I can actually see what's happening the better and more specifically I'd be able to to help you out so uh, Chris my dog likes to bark at other dogs at play in the play yard he encroaches on their space tail high and hackles okay um, Daniel Hyen would love to hear your quick thoughts on how you approach a reactive dog. He is scared of things. How would obedience help not help? He barks when he sees dogs. Then when he adjusts to it, we walk to the dogs. He is fine and next to the dogs with no issue, thanks. Um, I mean, Daniel, there's a few different things here. Again, video is, sir, you guys, I'm always going to say that, by the way. Video is going to help. So even if I give you some options here, um, sending me a video will help <laughs> exponentially what, you know, the advice that I can give you moving forward. And so here's the thing, you guys. Reactive dog can be moving forward towards the situation and reactive dog can be staying stationary towards the situation and reactive can be moving backwards away from the situation. And I think we have to specify what is actually happening? Is the dog forward? Is it middle? Is it back? What's happening? Because reactive can mean so many different things as you can, as you can see. So I'm just going to quick scroll down. Okay. 
there. So, you know, he's scared of things. Uh, how would obedience help or not help? I've got a great video that I'm going to be putting out soon. That'll I'll probably turn it into a podcast. It'll be the dog, some of the dog trainer daily stuff on here. I've got a, I've got a. It just hit me today driving down the road, and I'm like, ooh, I've got to write this down. I, you know, I've got to put it in my phone so I remember about obedience and getting to the root of the problem. Personally, I don't think obedience is going to help that situation because you can put that dog into a sit. It's not going to change his state of mind. So that's just me. Look, you can go ask 10 different trainers on their live stream what they think that are all obedience trainers and they can probably tell you that they can get it fixed. And, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't know how it works <laughs> at all. Uh, so it just doesn't feel right to me. That's all. Just being honest. Um, so he barks when he sees dogs. Then when he adjusts to it, we walk to the dogs. He is fine. And then next to me. So it just could be surprising to him. I, you know, again, Daniel, I, I, if you can send me some video, that would be, that would be fantastic. Uh, Corey, he used to be so good about those kind of things, but now it's coming out of nowhere. Well, to you, it's coming out of nowhere. To the dog, it's not. This is one thing we have to remember, you guys. Is I, you know, I always get these questions or comments of he barks at nothing. Well, he does. Dogs do bark at something. Or uh, my dog isn't that smart. He just doesn't get things. Well, he does. It may be slower than dogs that you've had in the past, or it may be so quick that y to you it's not. You know, you don't get it. it you know, it, it's it's a number of scenarios that can happen here. Uh, Natasha, my dog barks at everything and won't listen. Sees her shadow. Boy, this is the, the subject of the night. Uh, yep, she barks. Sees the neighbor's light. Yep, barks. No idea how to break this habit. She's a four-year-old St. Bernard. Um, boy, this is the subject of the night. Dogs barking at everything. You know, in this situation, you guys, leash work inside your house is going to help. I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of times we, we wanna be reactive to the problem instead of proactive to the problem. We see our dog bark, we wanna know the solution. Uh, we see our dog bark, what's the solution? Our dog gets reactive, what's the solution? Our dog uh, growls, what's the solution? You see what I mean? We can end up with this, I just talked about this, maybe it was the video last night. We end up with this paralysis through analysis. Um, that's an old golfing term that I used to use. and. You guys, you just, it just becomes in circles and circles and circles. What do I do with this? 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 You know what I mean? Instead of looking at this as a whole, every single time you have an interaction with your dog, that is like an event to your dog. It's all there is to it. Um, and that's something that Lynn really explained to me while he's been at our place a couple of times is, you know, every single reaction or interaction with a dog has true meaning to your dog. If you walk by your dog and you reach out and you pet it on your way by, it means something to your dog. So with your dog barking at the window, going over and saying no or stop or putting him in a crate for timeout or in another room for timeout, it's not going to solve things for you guys. Working your dog through that situation will. It might be some leash work. Um, you know, it might be putting a leash on the dog and walking them into the living room where they can't see and, and not letting them get back to the window until they chill out go back to the window, then they see that there's nothing there. It has to be addressed. We look at those as teachable moments, and that's one thing that we as dog trainers will do a lot with our own dogs. We take those teachable moments and we're gonna work through those. It's not like you can be a fitness trainer and go, man, you know, my, 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 my abs aren't as good as they could be, so the next time I kneel down and grab something or sit up, I'm really gonna work them for about 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like fitness trainer or, or, or people in fitness, or they take their time and go work on those specific things. We can in dog training too, but you can then you can also take those teachable moments and work through them as well. Um, so let's see, here's another. Uh, Melissa, pretty sure my dog is obsessed with water. He drinks the water when we give him in a bath, and I like I told you, he eats a lot of snow. Yeah, so that's leash, more leash work, Melissa. We did talk about that. Uh, but the leash work is outside. You guys, when I say leash work, it is such a broad term because I have to get, I have to keep it broad because I can't give one specific scenario to each person here with leash work. Um, 
because if I give that one specific situation to somebody and 10 other people try it on their dog that doesn't need it or can be detrimental, so I, I, I have to keep it broad. And I apologize for that, you guys, but I've got to do it for the betterment of dogs. I can't like give that specific, sometimes I can't give specific what leash work will look like because there's different dogs in different situations that can be different. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I hear about dog trainers telling somebody to go get an e-collar and turning it up and hi hitting hitting the, a high number on it on, on the dog for a certain amount of times to prevent barking or something. That is asinine and dangerous and just not fair to anybody. So I, I have to keep this broad. And again, I apologize, you guys, but that that is that is not. There's no selling point here. There's no secret there's nothing I just I got to keep the betterment of the dog in mind when it comes to these types of you know live streams and everything so uh, Melissa in this case he's drinking a lot or eating a lot of snow his nose is on the ground eating the snow I would probably keep him moving outside don't let him stop and the well, same thing if your dog eats eats poop just keep your dog moving until they go to the bathroom or do their thing but because then that can become an obsession it's like a dog with a laser pointer by the way if you do a laser pointer thing for your dog that is like detrimental to your dog psychologically but if you have a laser pointer and you're you know you're pointing it at the wall and everything and your dog starts looking at it like they're they're following it back and forth and then you turn it off and you put it away your dog has no idea that's happened so then it can create this obsession of where is it? I gotta keep looking for it. I know it's going to appear. When is it gonna appear? And then eventually it does. So you, we can't create an obsession by letting the dog just keep eating and keep eating the snow and keep eating and keep eating. Uh, you gotta keep them moving and look, maybe they just like the cold too. I, I, why? I don't know. I can't answer that question. I know we talked about you know making sure he's getting enough water and seeing if we can at least cross that out. So it's something to keep in mind. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, another dog barks when the wind blows. You guys got some sensitive dogs out here tonight. She will just sit outside and bark away and not care. It gets a bit much sometimes. Well, that's our understanding of it, Natasha. So the barking is for a reason. Dogs are not going to bark for no reason. Um, unless there's something neurologically off, like seriously off, they're not going to bark for no reason. There's, there's communication going on there for sure. If there's another dog out there, that other dog would know exactly what's happening. Um, let's see. Chris, I'm not sure what you meant by all that. I got to go back up. My dog likes to bark at other dogs at play in the play yard. He encroaches on their space, tail high, and hackles. Um, I pass it off as him being the alpha and pull him off to stop the barking, but he persists. Um, if he's alpha, he's not going to be barking. He's just going to walk in with a presence that gets their attention, and that's the end of it. Alpha and dominance are, are two words that are thrown around way, 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 too much. They just, that's just my opinion. I, I think it really is. Uh, Heather, what about dog to dog resource guarding of space and people? Perfectly fine on walks. Outside, not allowed free play together yet. Dog to dog resource guarding of space and people. Those dogs need to understand what's going on. Those dogs need better leadership, Heather. Strong leadership. Now, now listen, strong isn't like strong, like Hitler strong. Strong leadership is really fine-tuned consistency. Like, no, eh, today we're just gonna, and then back on. It has to be clear-cut, definitive to them what kind of leadership is involved there. Also, when it comes to resources, we gotta make sure that toys, bones, all that stuff is picked up and put away. That None of that stuff can be left out. We don't want them practicing that when it's not supervised and uncontrolled at all. Uh, my Pyrenees guards our bed and will bite another dog in our house if they did get too close and will also growl at the cats if they get close. What can I do? Ah, so now you're dealing with a Pyrenees who's a, kind of a natural guard dog to a degree who is using some of its DNA, possibly, to use towards the other dogs and animals in the house. Uh, I would probably put that dog away 
get everybody where they need to be in the house and then bring the Pyrenees up on leash to where it needs to be. Um, or you put that dog in the crate in the bedroom or tether it to the bed in the bedroom, something that prevents that guarding mechanism to, to kick in. But we're, we're dealing with DNA and instinct here too. So it's not like you're telling me, hey, you know, my, my beagle is, is doing this behavior, which that's completely out of the realm of what beagles are bred for. So we have to look at also DNA here and what we're working with. So, uh, you know, sometimes that can be tough because you're, you're dealing at that point with what's instinctual to the dog. And we have to be, again, consistent with that for sure. Uh, let's see, before I get too crazy going here with questions. All right, a little longer to go. Uh, let's see. Michelle, let's just keep keep the videos going. We'll keep talking. I, I won't address it here, so we, we can keep talking the, about the, the dog and the kennel thing. I gotta get back to you about that too. Don Goodhue, haven't talked to Don in ages. General question, when you train, do you take into account any breed specific traits or is it training the same across all breeds? See, this is perfect. A nice little tangent off of my previous question. Um, so Don, I think we have to customize, we, we try to customize the programs to every dog. So I don't have a cookie cutter program that says, which I, th that's where I, well, I'm not gonna get into it. Uh, that's where, like if I, if you sent your dog to us, I'm not gonna go, okay, we're gonna work on sit, we're gonna work on walk, the walks, and we're gonna work on um, a, a crate. Like we don't do that with every single dog coming in. We also, but we do have to look at breed tendencies too. Now, look, I am not a gun dog trainer, so if I've got somebody coming to me with a German short hair pointer that wants bird dog training, I am not your guy at all. I do not know about how to teach that dog that kind of thing, and there's plenty of experts that do. So when it comes to those specific type types of traits, you know, if somebody comes with a Belgian Malinois and wants it, you know, trained for bite work, I am not that guy. So, you know, to a degree, I'm certainly going to help. Um, but I feel like there's a place and a time for that. Now, if you don't fulfill that dog instinctually, then you have to start thinking about how to redirect that, that energy and that behavior to something else. So like Gemma, my puppy, is a mountain dog. You know, they pull carts and that kind of thing. This winter, I'm gonna probably have her start to pull an empty sled or something simple and light. I wanna fulfill that instinct uh, but I also want to be the one that provides that fulfillment too because then it makes me more valuable to her And I think that's what we have to keep in mind. So um, I do take into account breed It's not like a huge amount because I, ha I want to go with what's going between the ears first If I have a dog that is you know doesn't have social skills And I'm bringing that dog and it's and it's a it's a poodle I'm gonna go, okay, it's a poodle, but it doesn't have social skills. So I'm gonna study body language first with everything. How the dog interacts. So there might be some poodle mechanics going on, but otherwise I'm, I'm just paying attention to the dog as the dog and then going from there. Uh, yeah, Daniel, just send me a video. Um, let's see. Danielle, laser pointer, the way we keep our dogs exercising in the rain, we tell them all, all done when we turn it off and use the ASL sign. They have learned that once we say that, until we touch the flashlight with a pointer, it is done. Not sure if you think that might also be not such a great idea. I think it's not a great idea at all, Danielle, uh, because the thing about the pointer or the light or anything like that is that they can never catch it and there's not a scent to it. And those are two huge aspects of a dog's senses uh, and it's something they use all the time so you know if I took away your sense of taste and your sense of touch um, and all I did was put down you know the your most favorite food but you can't taste it and you can't touch it uh, it can probably get a little frustrating so I don't like the idea of laser pointers and flashlights and that kind of thing I think you're better off just doing some sort of leash stuff in the house, doing a hide and seek, doing a find it game, um, you know, putting your dog onto a spot to stay there while you go and hide a treat, come back and then send them to go get it and use their nose, there's a reward at, at the end. Uh, I would do away completely with the laser and the light for sure. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Natasha, your sister has a pup that is one year old and simply won't house train. No matter how many times we put her out, she pees and poops inside. Tried kennel training, etc. Even when she's outside with all doors open, she will go inside to use the bathroom. Would leash training help this? Uh, no. A very, 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 very specific supervised crating will help. You guys, when it comes to house training, dogs have to go outside to go to the bathroom, right? When we let them out of the crate. If they do not go outside, they come back in and into the crate for another five or 10 minutes. If, then again, if they start to go, then we can take them out. If they don't go, we take them back out again. It's almost like a reverse house training uh, where we want them to spend the, you know, a lot of time outside until they go and then they can come inside and have supervised free time or whatever the case may be. But if we let them out to go to the bathroom and they don't go and we come inside and we drop the leash or take the leash off and let them have the run of the house and then they go, like then it creates that pattern. So when they don't go outside, back inside in the crate for a little while, five or 10 minutes, and then right back outside again. We wanna create it so we want them to understand that if they go outside, then there's, they can have some of the freedom back inside. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Sammy, so you got a cat sitting, a 15-month-old German Shepherd, never seen a cat until now. First mistake to never introduce her to one as a puppy, so our dog wants to attack the cat always. That's a lot of work, uh, Sammy. Um, <laughs> cat sitting for the winter. Oof. Um, boy. Sammy, message me, okay? I, I, that's, that's a long... We may have to talk on the phone. I don't know. Maybe we can get through it. Uh, yeah, so here, Lori, here's a perfect example, you guys. My dog is good with other dogs, but when on leash and he sees another dog, he barks uncontrollably and I can't distract him. Here's the thing. We don't need to distract him. We need to address the problem. So if he's barking at the dog on leash, we're too close. Think proximity. So if you are 50 yards away and your dog is reacting, you're too close. You need to back up. There's no distracting this because you cross that threshold that that dog can handle and that level of distraction that you give him has to be 10 times more valuable than what he's barking at. The only way really to get his attention back is to remove him out of the situation or create a lot more space. Get his brain settled. And then you can slowly work your way back, but you have to keep that threshold in mind. Um, and that's the thing, like I, you guys, we have to think about thresholds and proximity when dealing with dogs and situations like the German Shepherd with the cat. There's thresholds, that type of thing. So uh, anyways, I, you guys, I think I'm gonna call it good for tonight. Yeah, it's about 8.45. It's almost my bedtime. I'll go through some of these uh, questions, you guys. I don't, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'll try to go through them in the next couple of days and still give you some answers and everything, just so I don't, again, I don't wanna leave you hanging at all. So now the time is coming, all right, to talk about the giveaway. So just before that, I'll just refresh now that everybody's here. You guys, we've got Cyber Monday coming up on uh, Monday. So we are offering a $250 discount off any of our board and train programs that, will, that are booked on Monday. So if you call us on Monday and you book, you will get that discount. If you do not book on Monday, you will, you will not get that discount. Um, and any of the board and trains sold will be for after, beginning after the holidays, because it's hard to, you guys, the, the, we used to do board and trains over the Christmas and the new year, but it's super duper difficult time of year for dog owners to be able to be accountable for the training because we have so much going on and it just tended to do this so again um, it can be for any time after the new year and we will get you going uh, with your dog get you started on the right foot for the new year we'll take care of that new year's resolution for you pretty much so now uh, I'm about to ask the uh, trivia question of the night here and so what, will, what this will uh, entail is a one hour 
uh, private training at my facility. You bring your dog. It's you know you can bring anybody. Part of your family is fine, and we will work on whatever we need to work on. Obviously, an hour we're not going to be able to you know make the world uh, um, you know do a 180 with your dog, but might be able to make some headway and at least get you started on the right foot. So, for those of you that I, I would just I just want to clarify that if you do not intend to be able to make it for a private, I would say to hold off with your guesses of the right answer. Um, if you are willing and able to make the trip wherever you're from, if you're local, if you're not local, and you're able to make the trip and you want to guess and you want to put your name into the hat, so to speak, with a guess, then I'm all for that too. So um, here we go. So this is for the free one hour training at my facility. Here is my question for you guys. Um, I would like to know first, and by the way, first person to answer the, the number correctly, and I will I will be watching the comments here. First person to answer correctly will be the winner. Um, and if that person ends up canceling for some reason, then I will go down the list to the second and third and so on if for some reason things don't work out. So obviously this is a post on Facebook. I'll be able to fall back on it as well. So I just think that covers everything. I just want to make sure that it's perfectly clear as to how we're going to go about this. So here, um, here's the question, you guys. How many states have I interviewed on my podcast? How many states have I interviewed on my podcast? Uh, first person to answer correctly with the correct number will win the free private one hour lesson at my facility so we will sit I'm not going to say anything as these numbers keep flying here bam all right so we do have a winner so Tim I like I saw you guess but I'm guessing since you're in Alaska that uh, you're probably not going to come here for a one-hour lesson with your dog especially since you uh, work with dogs so uh, that makes the ants the winning person. Hold on, because now my ticker is going like a million miles an hour. Uh, Amber Autumn Steel Hall is the winner. She answered 30, which is the correct answer. So to start with, I just want to make sure, Amber, this is something that you're willing uh, and able to do. Um, if you can answer me, that would be fantastic. I'm in Colorado though. Okay, so you guys, this is what I mean. This is what I wanted you guys to not do, um, was to answer if you are local. So now kind of the answer is out. So we may have to start this over again. Because... Sammy Thompson, it looks like you're the second one that got it right. So, Sammy, is this something that you would be able to do? Yes, Sammy, you're local, so yes. Is that correct? Okay, good. So we have a winner. Uh, Amber, maybe you're giving me an answer or an, an idea for the next time. Maybe a one-on-one -on -one Skype session or something like that that I can do. Maybe we'll do that next go around to help the people that aren't local um, and we can go from there. So anyway, Sammy, uh, do me a favor. Probably tomorrow morning, just um, shoot me a message uh, and that'll just kind of <laughs> remind me as I roll into bed tonight. Uh, just shoot me a message in the morning and I will put you in touch with one of the ladies in the office and we will get you scheduled with your dog for the free one hour private lesson. So beautiful. All right, you guys have a very safe Thanksgiving. Make sure that your dogs are, are taken care of here. Um, again, if you've got a big to do going on and a lot of people coming over, then uh, make sure that you get them exercised correctly before everybody shows up and just keep them safe. When in doubt, you guys, do not give your food, do not give any of your Thanksgiving food to your dog. Uh, let's just play it safe. So, you guys, until next week, and of course, now that I say this, episode, or state number 30 is with Brad Strickland from, uh, he's Alabama Dog Trainer. So if you guys haven't listened to the podcast yet, I just released it today. 
give it a good listen. Uh, and like I said, I've got some really great ideas rolling around in my head for some more of these dog trainer dailies that will go up. Kind of this, it's kind of turning into this vlog thing um, that I'm I'm doing and little video snippets here and there. But I think they're people are really enjoying them. So, anyways, you guys have a great week. I will see you next Tuesday. See ya.